Hi, I'm here. Okay, good. Um, let me take this, please. Uh, go forward. Let's talk into that. Hi, everyone. So let's just give others at least a minute for them to join. So if you know that your friend is not here, your peer mentor is not here, just send them a DM, tell them to join in so that we can start. In the meantime, I'll start presenting my screen with you guys. Um, before we do that, by um, a show of hands, how many people have gone through the assignment? The problem anticipation assignment. How many of you have gone through it? Okay. Not a lot of us. Okay, so what's the problem? Anyone who wants to tell me why they haven't gone through the assignment yet? Yes, not now. Go ahead. Me personally, I am very trying to work on the technical assignment, so I didn't consider uh, this one to be like critical right now. So that's why I haven't uh, seen it, and I was uh, waiting for the tutorial or this demo before we start implementing it. Oh, that's why I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to wait for the others. Since this is on recording, they can go ahead and look at the YouTube video probably when they're less busy. Okay. So let me just present the assignments to you quickly so we go through it. Just give it a minute to load. So in the meantime, as it's trying to load, so, So in the meantime, as it's trying to load, anyone who wants to tell me what they understand by the term problem anticipation? What do you understand by problem anticipation? Yes, you will. Okay, so from what I understand, problem anticipation means uh, how we approach when we encounter a problem and how we are going to solve, uh, what kind of mindset we'll have to the problem, or to the problem. That's what I understand. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Bihigu. Thank you. So I am Bahagu, and I think uh, problem anticipation is is not uh, uh, giving up a, a solution to your problems or to a problem, but instead it's the, it's uh, trying to forecast a problem before it happens and uh, uh, figuring out a method or a way to minimize either its impact or try, try to solve it before it happens. I think that's what uh, problem anticipation is. Okay, trying to minimize its impact. Okay, yeah. So let's just quickly go through the assignment. 
before I present the slides on what we expect you guys to do. Okay, so it's due on the 23rd of July, 8 p.m. UTC. So let's just try to do the work and submit, okay? Now, this skill, problem anticipation, this skill differentiates those who are proactive and those who are reactive, okay? Um, to be proactive means anticipating problems or events before they occur, i.e. before they happen, whereas reactive means reacting to events as they come, okay? So in the exercise, you're going to see a little bit of explanation on why we're doing this, what it means to be proactive and reactive, okay? There's a YouTube video that we are going to talk about here during this tutorial, but then obviously after this, before doing the work, it's um, highly recommended that you watch the video. It's just 12 minutes long or almost 13 minutes actually, but then it's an interesting video to watch. So for the assignments, you need to answer three questions. First of all, describe a time you were proactive. What was the scenario? How did you anticipate the problem? How did you plan ahead of time to address the problem? And what was the outcome of your proactiveness? However, if you don't have a time where you were proactive, then describe a time where you were reactive, okay? What could you have done to anticipate the problem at hand and plan ahead of time? This could regard anything such as like a job opportunity, um, an academic adventure, social interactions with friends, family, anything, any situation where you were reactive or proactive. Secondly, look at the giant social media platform, Facebook, okay? I know if we don't use it a lot, but then most of us probably have an account somewhere or we used to have an account or we know about Facebook. So in this day and age, Facebook, it's a very big social media platform. So look at social media platform Facebook in today's landscape. Anticipate a problem it would likely face, okay, like described in the video that you're going to watch, okay? And then what is a potential preventative solution that could be implemented ahead of time to address this future problem? So basically, you're going to look at Facebook with regards to what's happening in our landscape today, in our environment today, in the world globally. Then you try to look at a potential problem that you believe Facebook would likely face, okay? After that, you don't just anticipate the problem, okay? You then try to give a potential preventative solution, meaning something Facebook can do today that will deter the problem from happening tomorrow or at least even if the problem is not deterred, but then its effect is minimized, okay? After that, you need to add two paragraphs reflecting on one or two things you will work on to improve your problem anticipation skills during your time here at 10 academy and then at least one learning you acquired as a result of this assignment okay so basically um this is the support that you're having right now the rubrics it's there when you go through the assignment you're going to look at it the usefulness in real life everything is there so it's the whole shenanigan the usual way how we make your assignments okay so now before i present the slide um is this okay with everyone if you don't know where to access this just go to the folder the week two folder it's already there okay it's already um posted in the week two folder so just go through the week two folder and then you can have a look at this assignment okay but if anyone would like to share the link to the week two folder probably some people might find it difficult to get the link feel free to go ahead okay so i am going to go right into the tutorial for today so let me just stop presenting this okay Nat Niall, go ahead okay. can we use another 
social media platform? Sorry? Can we use another social media platform other than Facebook? No, for this assignment, it's just Facebook, just Facebook. Okay. Okay. Yes, Desmond, go ahead. Well, I'm asking that, um, uh, must, must, uh, can someone include like uh, the two, like um, a time when you are proactive and a time when you are reactive, or you just have to include one? Okay, so for the purpose of this assignment, you only have, um, let me see here, you only have one page to two page. So if you can include both a time where you were proactive and reactive, and then you talk about the Facebook analysis, and then you give your reflection, all within the frame of it being two pages long, but then your analysis is great, by all means, go ahead, okay? Does that answer your question? Okay, yes, Mon. Thank you, Hi guys, so are there any, are there any questions so far regarding this assignment? Okay, uh, perhaps Yati we can go through the Facebook exercise and uh, go into some of the specifics of how we are hoping the exercise analysis will look like for Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to share the slide that I prepared with you guys. So it's loading. So just give it a few minutes. Well, until it loads, I have one question. Yes. So on the task, on the second uh, bullet, it says, look at Facebook in today's mm -hmm. landscape and anticipate problem mm -hmm. like described in a YouTube video. So in a YouTube video, I don't understand that. Okay. Okay. So um, Behigo, don't worry. We're going to go through the YouTube video, well, an outline of the YouTube video, but then if you click the link, it's already there in the assignment. So you can click the link and then actually look at the YouTube video. Okay. But anyway, so let's just go through the slide. So the power of anticipation. Do we really need to anticipate? Anyone who wants to answer this, do we really need to anticipate? Whether it's concerning your school life, whether it's concerning um, your work life, your personal life. Is it necessary for us to anticipate? Guys, please let's participate. Yes, not now. Not now. Okay, thank you. Uh, according to your definition of uh, anticipation, it's like uh, trying to solve the problem before it really happens or trying to detect the problem before it exists will be helpful in our life and day-to-day uh, -day activities. So it is helpful in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, so now the difference between being proactive and being reactive. Okay, um, Desmond, do you have a question? 
Well, I don't have a question, but I wanted to give my point as well. Uh, it's, 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 it's important to actually anticipate because it helps you in thinking uh, of a case where you have, maybe you foresee a problem and you are able to actually tackle it before you meet it at hand. And it also gives you a sense of, like if you're planning for something, you get to uh, all the possibilities of, if this thing happens, then I could go this way. If this one happens this way, I can get it. I can get to tackle it this other way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Anyway, so I'm um, looking at the slide. Now we already know what anticipation is. Okay. Now, when you're trying to be job ready, this is a skill that is very necessary, being proactive. Okay. But it does not come as easy as it would to everybody okay now some of us naturally are proactive others are reactive but then in the world of work the skill that we really need to harness is trying to be proactive one key component of being job ready is being proactive okay what does this mean this means Yatiana, we've lost you. Yatiana? I think we've lost Yatiana. We've lost Yatiana. Can hear you properly. Okay. Sydney. You can hear me well. Yes. Yeah. That it. You you might spend like can hear you properly. Hi guys. Yeah. 
I am so sorry. Like I lost my network and I was actually explaining and then I realized that my network, I had lost my network. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. I am so very sorry about that. Anyway, so now one key aspect of being job ready, as I was saying, is to be proactive. That means doing the things you need to do before you need to do them. It might sound a bit confusing, okay? But then one simple example is this. If you have a car, you know that you need to change the oil, you know, after every two, three months. So if you don't do that, three, four, five months down the line, or let's say maybe eight to 10 months down the line, you're going to have some issue with the car. Probably it might just break down on you or probably some accident might happen. But then you know that you're supposed to change the oil. But being proactive is anticipating that I need to change this. I need to change this oil before the car gives me any problem because I don't want to have any problem because if I don't, 10 months down the line, one year down the line, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. So because I really don't want that, definitely I am going to change the oil of the car. That means you're being proactive, okay? But then others, they are not. What happens to them is this. They allow circumstances to control them. Situations around them to control their cause of action. They don't step ahead of time and take things in charge. Reactive people only take action when it is absolutely required, meaning only change the oil in your car after you've gone to the mechanic because you hear you don't like or probably the car broke down on the side of the road and you really don't like that. So you go essentially, okay? So is this okay before I move on to the next slide? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Can you please put the slides in presentation mode? You can't see them clearly. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, thanks. Okay. Okay, now, so, how many of you use Netflix? Just by the of an, how many of you use Netflix? Okay, so I see that we have some users, but then even if you don't use Netflix, you must have heard about Netflix. How many of us? It's not a new phenomenon right now. Exactly. So whether we use it or not, we know about Netflix. We know what it does. Okay, but then how many of us know about Blockbuster? Okay, Azaria, same, Abraham. I see we all know about Blockbuster. So who wants to tell us what they know about Blockbuster? Okay, Azaria. Um, so they used to actually rent movies, but um, they were making majority of their profits um, by late returns. So they actually had the solution to actually make a streaming platform like Netflix before Netflix, but they still wanted to earn money to keep the profit that they were earning. Um, so they decided not to change their model, but um, I think there's only one blockbuster store open right now and Netflix is Netflix. I love your last 
line netflix is netflix anyone else who wants to tell us what they know about blockbuster yes dimelash i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly are you here yes yes hello yes go ahead go ahead I, I, I didn't know this <laughs> so it, it's my first time to hear okay okay so it's your first time okay yeah, yeah that's fine blockbuster versus netflix now blockbuster they had been in the game longer than netflix okay they had the market edge they had the customer base they had all the the movies they had all the license and everything so basically they were a thriving company okay and they were in the video rental business now they believed in their business model 100 percent. so that is you rent the movie, they give it to you, let's say, for two, three days or five days, and then you return the movie. If you're late, you have to pay late fee. Okay, so 100%, they were convinced about that business model. What did they not do? As a growing company with a huge consumer base, they did not look into the current trends. They did not try to check out the data, analyze anything about what's happening, okay? Because their model had worked for quite some time and at that time they were successful, you know, they had a large percent of the consumer base they did not think there was any reason for them to look into current trends, look, look into the data, analyze anything, try to become better. Meaning they were not proactive. They did not look into the foreseeable future and say, okay, this is what we're doing now with our business model. But then two years from now, something in the market might change. So what are we going to do about that? Blockbuster was unable to do that. Now, Netflix, on the other hand, they were smaller, okay? They did not have the huge consumer base like Blockbuster. They did not have all the trust Blockbuster had. They did not have the, 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 the platform, the presence that Blockbuster had, okay? Now, however, Netflix, they read into user analytics, okay? That was one thing they did. They looked into what was happening right now at the market. And then they predicted that come two years, come three years, come four months from now, this is what users would be doing. This is what users would like. This is going to be a problem if we do not do A, B, C, D. So they were proactive. So they capitalized on what we know today as online streaming. So Netflix looked ahead. They saw the trend technology was taking, the trend that um, access to internet was taking, how fast the internet speed were, the speed you could take to download, everything they checked and they saw that it was becoming better. So they tapped into that market. They anticipated that if they were going to get a business model, the same as Blockbuster, then it was going to be a problem for them. So they did not. Instead, they did something different. Now, Blockbuster had failed in anticipating the problem of online streaming. They did not do that in any way. Even if they did, it was on a smaller scale as compared to Netflix. What happened to them? They lost they lost it all okay they closed the file for bankruptcy and now i don't even think they have about two to three shops open i really don't think so okay that's something that we can check but i really don't think so okay so this is what we talk about when we think about problem anticipation skills when you are working in the real world you need to anticipate that, okay, this is what I am doing now, but then two years from today, is this going to be valid? Will there be something else that would have come up? How am I going to attack that 
problem. What am I going to do about it now? How can I try to divert that problem? Okay. So this, um, it's just a picture of net, um, a picture of the rise of Netflix and obviously the fall of Blockbuster. So you can see Blockbuster was founded in 1985, Netflix 1997. So Netflix, they've been around for quite a while. Blockbuster, they were valued at $8.4 billion in 1994. In 2000, Netflix was valued at what? $50 million. So you can see the difference, okay, in terms of valuation. Blockbuster, $8.4 billion. Netflix, just $50 million. But at the end of the day, you see Netflix now is valued at $203 billion. That is at 2020. And at 2010, Blockbuster was valued at just $24 million. And that is way less than the initial valuation of Netflix in 1997, which was $50 million, okay? So before I move on, so that I know that I'm not just talking to myself, any observation, any question, any comment, anything? Am I here all alone? We can hear you very well. Yes. We are here. Okay. Okay. So moving forward. Moving forward. Yes, I'm on anticipation. We really need it for good. So problem finding versus problem solving. This is something that is very necessary in our day-to-day -day skill problem finding versus problem solving now what is problem finding problem finding is the art of thinking outside of your core responsibilities about what your business needs okay one of the main things that we are trying to do here is to get you job ready and trust me this is something you really need Think outside of your core responsibility. What do you think your business needs to grow? Okay. The moment you're able to identify what it needs and your business doesn't have it or the job that you're working at, it doesn't have what you think it needs to grow, then that means you have a problem. But then one other aspect is this. If you have been able to find the problem, you have been able to anticipate that this problem is something we would face. Obviously, it takes you one step closer to finding a solution, okay? So this is something that is very necessary. Problem solvers, they solve the problem their bosses gives to them. So just that, you go to work, if it's um, in an office job or if it's remote work, you sign in for the day, whatever you're told to do, you go ahead and you do it and you clock out and you sign off. Not saying that is bad, but then if you want to grow and if you believe in what you're doing, you're going to take it a, for a step further. So you are Anticipate a problem that is going to come. You're like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is the data set that I'm supposed to analyze. I have done that. But then looking into the future market or looking into the future trends, I believe that there's a possibility in X and X amount of time or amount of days or months, this is going to change. The user data might change. Um, the viewers might change. So this is what we need to do now. And because you think that type of way, definitely whatever you're doing is going to come out better than anyone who is just going to do exactly what has been given to them. So as you move on, think about how you can also not just solve the problem, okay, 
that your boss or your head is going to give to you. But also try to anticipate what might happen. Try to predict that, okay, this is what I see in the current scale of things. So because I see this, I understand that if we do so, we are going to avert this problem or we are going to generate more income or we are going to generate more users, depending on whatever you're working with. Okay, so it is always better to be a qualified so and then they just leave it at that. It still does not solve the problem. So by just anticipating that, oh, I know that this is going to happen. I have the data to back it up. I know that this is going to happen. All of that, well and good. Okay, but then what are you going to do about it? What are the steps you have planned to take? Have you done your analysis? Have you done a test? what are you doing to change it so taking the anticipation one step further by trying to pull offer solutions makes it an all-around learning process okay so the next slide is this now we are going into the response structure for your assignment now the first question you're asked to describe a scenario where you were either proactive or you were reactive so you already know that proactive is thinking that this is something that is going to happen so i am going to do x and x to try to either minimize the problem or try to amplify the the possible income or whatever that i'm going to get from it okay so you look at it and you say i am going to be proactive but then it has not been the case for every one of us some of us we've been reactive to certain situations so just describe whether you were proactive or you were reactive now you show the results of your choice whilst you were being proactive what was the outcome what did you gain whilst being reactive what was the outcome what did you lose okay after that you tell us what you would have done differently okay so if you were being proactive did it work? Did it help you? What would you do differently the next time? If you're being reactive, what did you do? What do you hope to do differently the next time? Okay. The reason for all of this, it's not just that we just want you to dig deep into your memories and think about a time you're being proactive or reactive. But then now that you know that anticipation is something you need to develop your job readiness, Looking at times that you've been either proactive or reactive, what would you do differently? If you had the chance to change them, what would you do differently? If you ever meet a situation exactly like that or find yourself in a different situation, what are you going to do differently? Okay. Now, another portion of the assignment needs you to look at Facebook. Okay, with regards to today's landscape. And then you try to anticipate a problem that Facebook might face in the future. And then you try to find a solution to the said problem. So the first step that you need to do is problem definition. What is the problem? Okay, specifically define the foreseeable problem. Do not be vague. So if you're talking about the change in culture, don't just say the change in culture. Are you talking about fake news, hate speech? Are you talking about their revenue, um, revenue platforms? Are you talking about um, their security breaches? Whatever you think is going to be a problem for Facebook, please be as specific as possible possible when you're defining the problem okay after that you analyze the problem so if you've decided that you're going to talk about fake news the whole problem of people posting fake news on facebook okay try to understand where the problem stems from that means where the problem is generated from. Is it because you have a lot of troll accounts, you know, a lot of fake accounts, or is it because some of the accounts are not monitored? Whatever you think the problem is generated from, you try to understand it. You understand how it will affect their revenue, okay, or 
how it will affect their users or how it will affect even the Facebook team itself. Okay, so basically you make projections based on your defined problem. So you analyze the problem. Now that I think this is going to be a problem for Facebook in 2022, I believe that this problem is going to affect their revenue or it's going to affect their user base or it's going to affect the general community or wherever you think the problem is going to affect. Now, the third step, is to generate possible solutions so it's all well and good to define the problem and to analyze it but then what are you going to do about that so you don't just anticipate that this is going to be the problem this is my analysis of the problem to come you take it one step further how am i going to get a solution to this it's always easy to just find one solution and stick to it. We are human beings, we have so many other things to do. I mean, we don't expect you to spend all the time doing this assignment. But then try to generate at least two solutions. The reason being, if you only select one solution, you're going to prejudge that solution as it being the perfect solution. But then it might not be so when it comes to implementation. So try to generate just two, maybe three, if you have time, four, five solutions, okay? You try to get them down. After that, the next step is analyzing those solutions. It's good to say because they have a lot of fake news on Facebook, I just need to profile a solution that they should just close down the accounts of everyone who seems to be like um, a troll or everyone who posts any fake news, you need to suspend their account. That might be good, but then take it a step further. Analyze the solutions, okay? Investigate the various factors about each solution. So factor in different things. So if we close down the account, what would happen? What would be the outcome? Are we going to suffer any loss as Facebook? Would there be any media backlash? You know, think about so many things because it's not just one person answering the problem, but then you have to factor in that almost everyone uses Facebook or at least has an access to it, okay? People talk about it. So if you do something out of the way, you never know, BBC might pick it up, CNN might pick it up. Will it be good for the media face of the company? Will it be good in terms of their revenue generation? their income, all of that, you have to factor in all those different variables when you're analyzing every solution that you've been, that you've generated, okay? As you're analyzing the solutions, kindly note the good and bad points of each solution, okay? After that, you select the best solution. You look through the various influencing factors for each of the solution and you decide which one you're going to keep and which one you're going to disregard. That's why we are advising you to generate at least two solutions because it's possible that after analyzing the solutions, after looking at the different factors, the one solution that you might actually really like might not be what is needed. Okay? Now, if you have no viable solution, that means if after looking at the different factors, you really don't think any of these solutions would actually work, it takes you back to the first point, your problem definition. Probably you did not define the problem as clear as possible, or maybe it's not a problem that would actually happen, okay? So you go back to your defined problem and try to make it as specific as possible. Then the last point is implementing whatever solution you've generated, okay? How can it be implemented? What mindsets will be needed for its implementation? What are the factors? Would there be any resource or resources needed for its implementation? Whatever you think is necessary, to implement the solution that you've proffered, you include it in this step. Now, the last point you have to do is write one or two paragraphs reflecting about two things. Firstly, after talking about the time that you were proactive or reactive, and then secondly, you now have a choice of, 
of being proactive for Facebook's foreseeable future. Okay, you've generated your problem, you've generated your answer. Now, look back and reflect. How do you plan on improving your problem anticipation skills? Okay, during your time here at 10 Academy. So it could be attending tutorials, it could be weekly meetings with your peer mentor, it could be just actually doing the work instead of thinking that I have a lot of work to do, but just actually doing it, okay? What do you think you need to work on to improve your problem anticipation skills? And then lastly, one or more skill this problem anticipation lesson has taught you, okay? so. What have you acquired after doing this? What did you learn? Okay, what did you come up with? What was the aha moment after doing this assignment? Okay, and um, that's it for the presentation. So if we have any questions about how it should be formatted or anything about what I've just spoken, now is the best time to ask the questions. So, anyone? Uh, Behigo, I don't understand. You've just said on YouTube. Do you want to unmute yourself? I was uh, telling you Mm -hmm. So the question says uh, a problem like described in the YouTube video. So. Oh um, yes, yeah. I think I didn't hear you talk about it in your presentation or. About the video. Hmm? You're asking about the video. Um, when you go through the document, okay, you can just click and watch the video. So the video basically, it's just telling us that we need to learn that surviving is always anticipating the problem. But I really don't want to take all the time to explain the video when you can actually watch the video yourself but the one take home message from the video was the whole thing about blockbuster and netflix and we've talked about that okay anyone else so if i ask anyone to give me a feedback will i get someone i'm curious if there's anyone who has any question regarding how the assignment should be done or is marked. I know most of this are in the assignment document that we sent to you, but does anyone have any question at all? And thank you so much, yet Tiana, for that very comprehensive presentation. Okay. When we talk about Facebook, the actual assignment does not ask you to look at Facebook's landscape, okay? It says, look at Facebook, how it's been operated in today's landscape, meaning look at the trend of what is happening right now. We have a lot of people who post videos on TikTok. We have people who prefer using LinkedIn for professional um profiles we have people who go on twitter we have people who go on instagram so look at the whole social media landscape right now and factor in facebook so with everything that's trending in the current social media landscape what do you think facebook would face as a problem let's say in 2025 or bring it closer in 2023 what do you think Facebook would face? What problems do you think they might encounter? So you look at that, you define the problem as specifically as you can, and then you try to offer a solution to that said problem. Okay? Any other question? Learn your name and analyze Yes, Mond, is that clear? Oh, thank you. Any other questions? We have around five minutes left.
Okay, so well, I'm guessing that this is clear for us all. So um, if there's no more question, no more comments, um, I think we're going to call it a day. And um, I hope that you guys would do your very best. And if you ever have any question concerning how you should actually do it, whatever, if it comes up tomorrow, feel free to just send me a message, okay? Um, Cindy, do you have anything you want to add? Yes, actually. The deadline for submitting this assignment, ladies and gentlemen, is on Friday. Okay? By then, you should have received the results of last week's assignments. And uh, I'm really excited to get to hear the kind of submissions you will make for this specific assignment and all the kind of perspectives that you will come up with as some of the threats facing a like Facebook in today's social media landscape. Okay, so also remember that on Thursday we have the tutorial for design thinking. The deadline for that design thinking is next week. So we'll call it a meeting. And uh, see you at Rocket Chat. So have a good one, every, everybody. Bye.